So now let's look at bearing. And what is bearing? Bearing is an angle measured clockwise from the north direction. If you remember our discussion from longitude and latitude, we talked about the four cardinal points where we have the north, south, west, and the east. So the section in between the north and the east is called the northeast. Section between the south and the east is called the southeast. Between the south and the west is called the southwest. And between the north and the west is called the northwest. So how do we measure bearing? Now, if you can see, we measure bearing from the north direction and clockwise from the north direction. So let's say I want to identify a bearing of say 60 degrees. Now when I have this, my cardinal point in which I have what my north and my south here and I have my west and my east here. I can see that this is what 90 degrees. Here is also 90 degrees. So here will be 180. Here will be 90. So here will be 270. And here will be 90. So the four sections together will be 360. So 60 degrees lies between 0 and 90 degrees over here. So this is a bearing of what? Of 16 degree, 60 degrees. How about the bearing of say 150 degrees? Now when I draw my four cardinal point, in which I have north, south, west, and east. Now I know that from year to year is 90, and 90 to year is 180, so 150 lies in between here. So I just draw a line from the center here, and this angle here is what 150 degrees. So this is a bearing of 150 degrees. How about a bearing of say 230 degrees? So if I draw same line, I have my north, south, west, and east. Now I know that from year to year is 180 to 70 and 230 lies somewhere here. So the angle starting from the north clockwise to this line over here is what a bearing of 230 degrees. And finally, how about a bearing of say 300 degrees? Draw my four cardinal points. And then that is my north, south, west, and east. This is 90, 180 from year to year, 270. From here to here is 360, so 300 lies between 270 and 360. So what does it become? It becomes a line between there. So the angle starting from the north direction in the clockwise direction is called the bearing. So this is the bearing of 300 degrees. So now, how do we convert compass bearing to conventional bearing? So what we've talked about now is the conventional bearing, but sometimes we have to read off our bearing in compass mode so how do we go about that so the first thing we want to do is we want to face in the direction of the first letter then we move in the direction of the second letter so for example a compass reading will be like what not 30 degrees east so the first thing we want to do is we want to face in the direction of the first letter so we want to face towards the northern direction so it is my center point here i face towards the northern direction then I move in the direction of the second letter. Then I move towards this direction of the east. And the angle 30 degrees is what? Not 30 degrees east. So to do that out clearly, to find the bearing of what? Not 30 degrees east. I know that is my north, south, and my west, and my east. So that be, I look towards my northern direction. 30, then I move 30 degrees towards the east. So I move 30 degrees towards this direction. And here is what 30 degrees. So this line here is what not 30 degrees east. How about we have a situation in which you have say not 50 degrees west? So how do I go about this? See practically the same thing. I move towards the first letter. So in this case, I move towards what the northern direction. So I, I'm in this direction towards the north. Then what? I move towards the second letter, and the second letter tells me to move towards the west. So I move 50 degrees towards the west. So for my northern direction, I move 50 degrees what? Towards the west. So this becomes what? 50 degrees. Now, if I want to convert this to the conventional bearing, I know that the conventional bearing is always measured from the north in the clockwise direction. So this will also be equivalent to finding this angle over here. And since I, I know that the angle in the full cycle 
is worth 360. I know that the angle here is going to be worth 360 minus 50, and that is equals to what 310 degrees. So not 50 degrees west is the same thing as writing a conventional bearing of what of 310 degrees. So now let's look at another example and let's say I have a bearing of say south 30 degrees what west. So what do I do? I first draw my four cardinal points. So I have what north, south, west and east. So I face in the direction of the first letter. So I face in the direction of the south then move in the direction of the second letter. So now I'm moving 30 degrees west. So I move towards this direction. So from the south, I move towards this direction. 30 what degrees. So now this is south 30 degrees west. If I want to convert it to a conventional bearing, and now for the conventional bearing, I have to measure all my angles from the north towards that line. So I have to measure the angle from here towards here. Now I know that this small angle over here is what 30 degrees. I know that the angle on a straight line, this angle over here is what 180. So the total angle here is just going to be equal to what 118 plus 30 degrees. And what does that become? That becomes 210 degrees. So south 30 degrees west is the same thing as having 210 degrees. When you're talking in terms of the conventional bearing. So now we're going to look at a concept in which bearing is usually represented. So now, how do we locate bearing? The bearing of a point is usually given in relation to another point, commonly expressed as the bearing of A from B. So let's look at this example below to see what I mean by that. So for instance, how do you represent this? The bearing of A from B is 30 degrees. So that means you have two points. And those two points, one of those points is A and the other point is B. But now I thought that the bearing of A from B. So what you are instructed in is basically where is the point in which you are calculating it from. So I'm calculating the bearing of A from point B. So I'll start by identifying my point B. And I'll draw my four cardinal points. So this is my point B and this is my north, my south, my west and my east. And I'm told that from point B... The bearing is 30 degrees. So now I'll measure a bearing of 30 degrees, something like this. So when I trace that line straight to any point, it can be any length, if I'm not giving the length, and I draw the four cardinal points at the other end, this point here is what? Is point A. So this is the same way of saying the bearing of point A from B is what 30 degrees. So that means when I measure bearing of 30 degrees at point B and I draw a straight line. Then the, at the other terminal, that point is what? Point A. So then look at an example. And here I thought that the bearing of X from Y is 46 degrees. What is the bearing of Y from X? So now the bearing of X from Y. So I draw out Y, my point Y. Then I have my north, my south, and my west and my east. And I thought that the bearing is what? 46 degrees, which will lie in this first quadrant over here. So I draw what 46 degrees. And I know that at this point over here, this point will be what? This will be my point X. So now the question now asks that what is the bearing of Y from X? So it means that if I consider that point Y now, what is the bearing of Y from point X? So if I look at it from point X and I draw this line, it's asking that what is the bearing of Y from point X? So in other words, it's asking me that what is the angle from this northern direction here to this line over here. Now, if you look at this carefully, this angle over here, 46 degree, is an alternate angle to this angle over here, which is also what? So this angle over here will definitely be what? 46 degree, because they are alternate angles. I know that the angle on a straight line over here is 118. So the total angle will just be equal to what? 118 plus 46. And what does that give us? 226 degrees so the bearing of y from x is 226 degrees so another way to think about it is if i ask you to sketch if i told you that the bearing of y the bearing of y from x 
is 226 degrees and ask you to sketch it out, what would you do? The first thing you will do is that you will start from the other point X, so you locate point X and you draw your cardinal point north, south, west and east. Now you are told to measure an angle of 226 degrees. You know that 226 degrees will lie between the south and the west. So you just draw a line over here and you have all your words. 226 degrees and at this other point over here what do you have you have your point y so you can see basically the way we transform questions or the way we interpret questions in terms of bearing and look at another example that is really key to understanding this concept after we discuss the concept of cosine rule and sine rule which we talked about in the last module so now let's move on to another example we are told that a man walks from point A up north for a distance of 4 km. So a man is standing at a particular point at point A. Now we know that this is our north, our south, our west and our east. Then he moves up north. So he moves in the northern direction a distance of about 4 km to a point B. So this is the point B where he moved to. Now at this point B, before it changes direction due east and walks 3 km to point C. So this is my north, my south, my west and my east. Now we move, change its direction to point towards the east for a distance of 3 km to point C. So it moves towards point C. So this is point C over here. The first question asks, how far is he from his starting point? So from east. So how far is it from its starting point? So that means what is the distance from this point A here to point C? That is basically the question. And if you look at it, we can see that this is a world right angle triangle because the angle here is directly 90 degrees. So now we know that this is the hypotenuse side of this right angle triangle. And if I call that say small b, I can write out that word that b squared is equal to 4 squared plus 3 squared. So does that become b squared is equal to 16 plus 9. So b squared is equal to 25 and b becomes the square root of 25 which is equal to 5 kilometers. So he is what? 5 kilometers away from his starting point. Now the b part of the question asks us to find the bearing of c from a. So the bearing of c from a so we are trying to look for position T from what this angle over here A. So I'll draw that and sketch that out quickly. So I have point C over here. And this is my point A over here. And I'm told to find the bearing of C from point A. So basically what are they asking me to find? I go to my point A and I draw a line towards the line. Or an angle towards the angle. So this is the angle that is required of me. This angle theta. That is what I'm required to find. So I come here and label a theta. So now if I look at this triangle carefully, what can you observe? You can observe that here is the what is the opposite, here is the adjacent, and here is the hypotenuse. So now to find this angle, I can use my sine theta because now I know that what my sine theta is given as what opposite over hypotenuse. So sine theta, my opposite in this case is what? Theory, and my hypotenuse is 5, so which is equals to 0.6. So theta will be equal to arc sine of 0.6. And what would that give you when you punch your calculator? You get 36.87 degrees, or approximately 37 degrees. So this angle over here, theta is what? 37 degrees. So theta is what 37 degrees. So the bearing of C from A is what is 37 degrees. So this pretty much sums up the basic idea behind bearing.